one is in that is coming for now. Um, so if you're okay, I will let everyone else in the meeting before you start. Sounds good. Okay. Well, here they come. Okay, it is uh, 2 o'clock on November the 25th, and uh, I'll call this public meeting to order and ask if there's any declarations of pecuniary interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. Okay, seeing none, uh, welcome every everyone um, who's joining us here. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to present and receive public input regarding a proposed draft plan of condominium on subject lands known as 6552 Beatty Line in Fergus. The proposed draft plan of condominium uh, consists of 12 single detached residential lots and 18 semi-detached residential units with a common road access. The County of Wellington file number for this application is 23CD-20202. If a person or public body does not make oral submission at the public meeting or make written submission to the Corporation of the County of Wellington in respect of the proposed plan of condominium before the approval authority gives or refuses to give approval to the draft plan of condominium, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Corporation of the County of Wellington to the local planning appeal tribunal. If the person or public body does not make oral submission at the public meeting or make written submission to the Corporation of the County of Wellington in respect of the proposed plan of condominium before the approval authority gives or refuses to give approval to the draft plan of condominium, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning and appeal tribunal unless, in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. Additional information regarding the proposed draft plan of vacant land condominium is available by calling 519-837-2600 extension 2171 to obtain the information electronically or by mail due to the closure of the county office at this time. If you wish to be notified of the decision of the Corporation of the County of Wellington regarding this application for plan of condominium, you must make a written request to Planning and Development, Corporation of the County of Wellington, 74 Woolwich Street, Guelph, Ontario, N1H3T9. And I'll ask the clerk to let us know how notice was given. Sorry, let me find my mic here. Yes, sorry, Marilyn Linton, through you. Uh, notice was mailed to prescribed persons, agencies, and public bodies on November the 5th. A copy of the notice was also placed in the Wellington Advertiser on November the 5th, 2020. Therefore, I can confirm that the requirement for giving notice was completed on November the 5th, 2020. Thank you very much. I'm now going to turn it over to an introduction by our Wellington County Planning staff, and I'll call on Megan Ferris to introduce this application. Welcome, Megan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, staff, and the public. Thank you for having me here today. So as required under the Planning Act, a vacant land condominium uh, application, uh, which has been received by the county, is required to go through uh, a public engagement and public meeting process, which is being held here today. The intent of this meeting is to hear um, comments and um, comments from the public, from the township, and ultimately no decisions are being made on this application today, and ultimately it will be the county of Wellington that is the approval authority for the condominium application. But ultimately, I'm here to listen to the comments and concerns um, from the public, from council, and to answer any um, council-specific questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Megan. And now I'll, I'll call on the applicant. And I think uh, Jeff Boozman from Van Harten is going to speak first. Yeah. <clears throat> Jeff. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Councillor and public. My name is Jeff Buseman. Um, I'm, I'm the agent for this application. 
Taylor McDaniel is the property owner. He's on the line. Also, we have Scott Catan, a consultant for the traffic study that was done on the line, and Astrid is on the line of planners and is working with us. My purpose here is just to briefly describe the draft plan and what we're doing here and go from there. I have a slide I'd like to show. I can either do it by sharing my screen or I gave this slide ahead of time to Carrie. So what is the best way to do this, Carrie? Sorry, Jeff. I'd prefer if you shared your screen. I've given you the ability. That way I'm not having to do too much. Okay. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Couldn't hear you. I'm getting feedback that says host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. Try now. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. So this property, I'm just going to give a zoom here, is at the corner of Beattie and Farley. I was supposed to be side road 19 there. And the site is at the corner of Farley and Beattie line. This property has already gone through a zone change process, and that has been approved for this development. And also we're going through a site plan process as well, and that is ongoing. Fundamentally, the development could proceed as is if this was going to stay with one ownership and continue as such. The development could proceed without this meeting. But the idea is here to separate the parcels to respect the different units. So just to go over the basic development, I've highlighted in yellow the fundamental development. This will be a future phase for an apartment building type condo, but we're discussing today just the yellow section. Of the yellow section along here, along this side here, are 11 single family dwelling units. So units 1, 2, 3, all the way down to unit 11. Over in this stretch, we'll have six semi-detached units. Here will be four more semi-detached units. Here will be six more semi-detached units. And here will be one more single family dwelling. There will be a common element road that continues, that comes off the feeding line and goes through here and hit Farley Road. Those are the basics of the vacant land condo. A vacant land condo is fundamentally that people will have ownership of, say, this whole parcel or unit, and then their house would be built within it. The other part of the definition of a vacant land condo is that there will be common elements. And the common elements in this case for sure will include the road, and everybody will have a shared cost in that road and any other infrastructure related to this development. That's the nature of a vacant land condo. And eventually, when approved and finally registered, this vacant land condo will be registered on title. There have been a couple of comments from the public on a bunch of different things, one of which is a concern of traffic, not at this area, but at the corner of Side Road 19 and Highway 6. I thought it would be best that we have Scott address that question and that comment about the intersection at that spot. So if it's okay with you, Mr. Chair, I'd like to give the floor to Scott. Yeah, that's okay with me. Go ahead, Scott. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Scott Catton. I work for Paradigm Transportation Solutions Limited. We were retained to complete the traffic impact study for this site. The scope of the study was determined in consultation with both the Township of Center Wellington and the County of Wellington prior to completing and submitting the study. We submitted the study, I believe it was in July 2018, and then the study was subsequently peer-reviewed by the county's transportation engineering consultant in October 2018, and we responded to those peer-review comments at that time. Our transportation study focused on the intersections of Beattie Line North with Farley, Side Road 19, Colburn Street, and St. Andrew Street, along with the two proposed 
driveways, or rather the vehicle access points to the site, including the red block that's illustrated on the screen there. Through the transportation impact study, there was consideration for background growth in the area. Background growth was factored in to account for generalized growth, and that was assumed at a rate of 1% per annum. We also assumed the build-outs of the Northwest Fergus Secondary Plan areas, along with a couple of other sites, including the Keating Subdivision lands and the Grove Memorial Hospital lands. The main conclusion of the study was that the improvements that were outlined in the Northwest Secondary Plan area should be implemented. There were some capacity issues identified at the BD Line North intersection with St. Andrew Street, where it's recommended that signals and some turn lanes be installed. And that is all. In regards to the traffic issues that have been raised by gentlemen along Highway 6, we have not been involved in the study of that. It's my understanding the county has retained an engineer to look at that, and the county's engineer should respond and comment on those concerns. Thank you. Thanks very much, Scott. Taylor, did you have anything that you wanted to add to this? Thanks, Mr. Lemme. No, I don't. I think Jeff covered it well. It was pretty straightforward. It's been about three years in the coming now, so we're happy to be here today and look forward to building it out. Great. Thanks, Taylor. I'm not going to call. We have a number of delegations here. Our neighbors and other residents would like to speak to this application. I'm first going to call up Francis Norlin, a resident, to come up. And can we maybe get the sharing screen off for a sec so we can all see the faces here? If we have to go back to it, we can. Thank you. Welcome, Francis. Francis, are you there? Karen Lipton, I will keep an eye out in case she's late to the meeting, but she does not appear to be to have joined us. Okay, because there's a couple tiles that I have without names right now, so I'm not exactly sure. Moving on to our second delegation, Paul Crabb. I invite you to come and speak, Paul. Paul, you're still on mute, so if you could take yourself off mute. I apologize that this isn't as easy as a live meeting, but it's the best we can do right now. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm, did the members of the committee get the presentation I sent out? Now I didn't hear back. I think the committee got everything that was sent to us regarding this application. Okay, and are you okay if I run through the presentation and take over the screen? Sure. Okay, I will make it an attempt. If not, I will just proceed in the interest of time. So we'll try that. So... I'm not sure. Is that working at all, or...? No, we aren't seeing anything on the screen right now. All right. All right. Well, I think I'll just revert back here to... I'll make it one more attempt for your entire screen. Now... Ah, it says there I'm sharing the screen. Now I'll try it. Is that working? You're sharing your notice of the public meeting. Yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay. So I'll just jump in. Side Road 19, it's a one-kilometer residential road between BD Line, where the proponent is building 
uh, the houses and, and then later an apartment, uh, and uh, Highway 6. And BD Line's a collector road, or it's identified as a future co collector load, a road in your uh, in the uh, Wellington County Strategic Plan, or Wellington Township uh, Strategic Plan. Uh, Gordon Street and Side Road 19, they're offset by 73 meters, and 29 of those meters uh, of that offset is used for paper. So, and then there's only 44 meters left uh, for two left-hand turn lanes, one southbound, turning left onto Gordon, and then the one we're here to discuss, the northbound, uh, left-hand turn off Highway 6 uh, going west onto Side Road 19. To contrast that, uh, one, you know, one road up, Side Road 18, um, there's a 50 meter taper and then 100 meters of storage just for one, uh, one lane traffic and there's no oncoming traffic. So if you're a resident in this area, what you experience right now is a number of things in that, but just, you know, the importance of Side Road 19, it is the uh, convenient access to the Walmarts, the liquor stores, to the shopping down in that area uh, for folks on Side Road 19, and I think it'll be used for folks that are uh, then, you know, uh, join this development and, and live there, reside there as well. I'm not so sure about the Northwest Fergus, um, you know, uh, secondary plan area, you know, they might go out 18 and they might go out through the subdivision through a street, I can't remember the name of it, there's lights there, and wind their way through a, you know, a stop sign in the subdivision uh, to get there. Although uh, I would suspect some of them would turn north and then turn east on to uh, uh, Side Road 19 and then go to Walmart that direction because there's no lights when you get to Highway 6 going the southern route. So it's a bit of a maze getting to what is the world's largest really retailer and uh, you know and it beats Amazon by by double or more uh, there but it, that's a busy area in terms of shopping it's a good destination for shopping it's one of the reasons we wanted to stay close uh, in this area um, we, we don't know what the impact of the Northwest uh, you know, project there. It, it's getting very close. Like phase two and three are, are getting very close to development. They're uh, they're uh, they're really doing a, a great job of building there. And uh, you know, it looks like there's going to be significant occupancy by this spring. So then we are going to have a good understanding of what the traffic uh, ha you know pattern will be coming out of there. What people will use. Are they going to go to a shop at Walmart? Are they going to the liquor store? Those kind of things. I'll also point out this is part of the connecting link. Uh, this intersection up to uh, Side Road 19 is part of the connecting link, and if you go there, you'll see the connecting link uh, sign there. It's a little stake with the CL uh, logo on it. Going to the next slide, the statement of issue is this limited storage. And I've kind of drawn it, but when I was just there uh, driving through there uh, today, and this makes it look like there's tons of storage. It looks like two or three vehicles there, uh, there, but it is limited when you get there uh, for that. What I see happening, and it's occurred to me, uh, some people I know, my wife for sure, uh, southbound traffic, they're coming down, they want to make, and they want to turn left onto Gordon Street. They're using uh, the left-hand turn storage as the taper. So they start to cross the line. You can see them. And if you approach and you're planning to turn uh, left onto, you know, you're northbound and you're turning left on side road 19, they're already encroaching on the yellow line or crossing it, and then they got to veer back. And uh, you got to make sure your signal's on. If you fail to do a signal, uh, you know, there is a risk of the head-on or near collision. And I wouldn't bring this to this committee if this had been once but it occurs many times. I've even had a dump truck uh, start to cross the line then change his mind when he sees me starting to move on that taper. The taper is quite sharp um, to, to get into the proper uh, left-hand turn lane. At times, this storage area of two to three vehicles uh, going northbound and, and turning left onto side road 19 is full. And it's sometimes full with southbound vehicles who are also turning left, but 
left and southbound onto Gordon, or it's um, full with two or three vehicles that want to make a left-hand turn on side road 19. And you can't get off the road, and there's not a lot of meridian there, but uh, so you end up stopping Highway 6 North, and it's really tricky. If you turn right on Gordon and then you start to move over, you find it's full. Then the light changes for the northbound Highway 6. Everybody's gunning it and ready to go, and there you are uh, plugging the highway. And, you know, they all want to go to Arthur or wherever they want to go, north anyway, and, and so forth. I have a personal account and friends who come to visit me, and what they do, and they live, um, you know, yeah, on the east side of Highway 6, they go through the mall. They, they have decided that this, this corner is too tricky for them to navigate, and so they drive through the, the mall, and that really put, you know, that's the wrong thing, because you have people intent on driving you know, intent on going somewhere, they're coming to my house or going to the hospital or going somewhere, and they're intent on that, and meanwhile, there's other people there with shopping carts, and maybe someday with kids, and, you know, after COVID, there'll be, uh, you know, kids and everything in tow, and they're either going into the store, intent on getting groceries, or, you know, coming back out of the store, intent on uh, getting home with the groceries and that. And so you have two people with different intentions on, you know, and, and you know, uh, Freshco, they put the roadway right in front of the, uh, the store, which it seems traditional, but it also, it puts, uh, I think, uh, it adds to the risk of the, uh, the folks pushing the carts around. So that's the situation there. I, I then, uh, going to the next slide, why is this relevant to this proposal? And I know this proposal is running itself. Well, we're increasing density by 30 homes and uh, 71 apartments eventually when it's all built out. Um, the access to the majority of the parking, if you know, and maybe the plans will change, but the majority of the parking and the access is out to BD line south of side road 18. And that, so therefore the natural return route, and I'm not talking about leaving, but the natural return route is going to be uh, come up to that inter, uh, to the intersection at uh, side road 19 and highway 6 if, they're, if they've gone shopping at the liquor store, the beer store, the pharmacy and uh, you know Walmart and those the natural return route they're going to turn on side road 19 hit BD line, turn right and, and then come in uh, that side, so that, that's their natural, they're not going to drive north uh, or, or, you know, drive all the way to 18, go across, and then come back down uh, south, and then go in. It's just not human nature uh, to do that. There was a traffic study done, but the traffic study, and I'm not the engineer here, I may have got it wrong, but I have, you know, posed this question a few days ago, and no one's, you know, said, oops, you did get it wrong, but this table out of the traffic study shows 100% of the traffic or it's accounted for 100% of the traffic, 0% on side road 19, and it's to, from. So it's also talking about the returning uh, cycle, which is the one that I'm, I'm raising the concern on. So then the relevant documents. Well, on March 10th, I notified the police. I said, well, this can't be. I can't have vehicles uh, crossing into my lane, risking a head-on collision. I live here. Um, and, you know, vehicles, are, are they speeding or not? I don't know, but they're, you know, coming down from doing 100 kilometers an hour on Highway 6. They get to 18, and the speed limits start to come in, and um, the people are slowing down. But those folks southbound are intent on turning left and making the light, and you, everybody on this call knows, like, well, you want to make the advanced green, you want to do this, you want to do that, and that, and uh, they are taking uh, uh, the left-hand turn lane onto side road 19, as the taper uh, when they can and if there's nobody there and hopefully their their full attention is where their car is and their vehicle is and not looking at that green light and, and uh, not you know and looking ahead of them and not risking a collision the OPP got back to me and said this is a uh, you know uh, this is a matter refer it to the department responsible for the traffic light so I did and you know, uh, Senator Wellington Public Works confirmed that there was limited storage. The lanes provide storage for two to three vehicles with a 29 meter taper 
uh, with them. And, and 29 meters, it's quite steep. So when you, it's quite sharp. When you make that turn, and you, you, you turn into the taper so that you can get lined up for that left-hand turn lane, you freak out the guys coming southbound because suddenly they think there's somebody bound to uh, cross your lane. They're about to cross uh, the yellow line and, and uh, head on with them, you know, and then you got to veer back. If it's slippery, who knows? So you got to be quite cautious and you actually don't take those, you know, when it's slippery, you're not going to make that sharp, which further reduces the storage there because you got to move in gradually. The provincial policy statement, it directs municipalities to plan for infrastructure and make sure they're planned over the long term and to protect public safety. And then the Wellington Center, uh, you know, the Center of Wellington official plan, and I'm preaching to the choir here, but uh, it says impacts on the safety and efficiency of existing infrastructure need to be addressed. And, you know, I've put little expert or excerpts and stuff in here just to fill out the slide. but. Um, there's no time frame on any of these things. It doesn't say uh, you do it early in the planning cycle or late or whatever. That obligation stays with uh, any committee or any any step of the approval process as we uh, add uh, as we add uh, infrastructure and or as we add people and buildings and and build out uh, the town. Uh, the Wellington uh, Center Wellington has to address uh, infrastructure and efficiency. This is not an efficient corner, it's a dangerous corner. So my request at this time is one, that you just pause the development uh, in this proposal until the Township of Center Wellington addresses the existing traffic safety and storage deficiency uh, uh, at the intersections of Highway 6 and Side Road 19. We cannot add to the deficiency, you cannot add traffic to this uh, um, this intersection because you're just adding and piling on uh, risk and problems. Um, then uh, once that's completed, I would re request the proponent undertake a reassessment of the traffic impacts of side road 19, including the intersection of sideway, uh, highway 6. Your re reassessment to take into consideration the following. Returning traffic by a side road 19 from visits to retail facilities south of the intersection, returning traffic via Gordon Street and High School, uh, the Sportsplex, Highway 401, Orangeville. I used to commute that route uh, to Toronto. Um, the soon to be completed phases of the Northwest Secondary Development Plan. I think they're light. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot, but I do think returning traffic uh, going into uh, especially the north end of the Northwest Fergus Secondary Development Plan could occur. But I think it's less, but we should look at it and just see what people are really doing or going to be doing there. Finally, the traffic study, I noted the traffic study, it uses so many, so many vehicles per hour. So at rush hour, there is 30 vehicles per hour. So that means one every two minutes. But that's not how traffic works on this section of the road. There are a series of lights. There are left-hand turn lanes. There's a new dealership, you know, where where there's no left-hand turn lane, but you're gonna, uh, you know, traffic's gonna stop as someone turns, uh, you know, uh, left into a dealer and and holds holds up traffic. Um, there, you know, vehicles coming down from Highway 6. Some go the speed limit. Some go slow. And you see five, six cars or more sometimes, uh, especially if the first one's following the speed limit, bunching up. So there is a way to statistically take into account the clumping and bunching and, and surges in traffic. And that's when this thing is occurring. It doesn't, there's no issue if traffic was moving and every vehicle was spaced two minutes apart, there'd be no issue. But that's not what's occurring. That doesn't occur in real traffic. It doesn't occur at this intersection, especially with the proximity of lights at Walmart, proximity of a light right at the, the Freshco and the, uh, you know, the traffic coming in in bunches, uh, southbound traffic coming in uh, large bunches as, as it normally does on a highway. That is the end of my, and I'll try and figure out how to get the screen back or you can uh, take the screen back somehow. Maybe yeah, you I think, can do that. I think, it is, I think it is back. Thanks, Paul. I forgot okay. to mention that there was a 10 minute time cap, so that's why that was on me and I had to let you keep going. Yeah. Um, 
So thanks for that information. Thanks uh, for providing us with uh, your thoughts on that. I think now that Francis um, uh, Norman, a resident, is now with us here, and I will pass it over to Francis. Welcome, Francis. Okay, just making sure I got the mic going. Thank you. I had some issues trying to log into the Zoom meeting. Um, for the record, um, I did when uh, both these uh, developments that are under consideration today uh, were posted, I did uh, make a request that the meeting be scheduled in the evening. Um, that request was not passed along to the powers that be that make those uh, decisions. And so I am delegating from work. I've had some issues uh, working around the security features at my, uh, I work for the school board um, to get in. So uh, I too wish to um, speak, uh, Paul, I did not catch all of your presentation, uh, but I, what little I did catch, uh, share my, many of the same concerns. Um, so I am a longtime uh, resident of uh, Central Wellington. I've lived here since 2005. Um, I moved into my property on the 19th side road, and then the tornado hit, um, which is quite a welcome to the, to the neighborhood. I've watched the areas develop and intensify. I understood there would be some growth and intensification when I moved in. However, in the last couple of years, um, and especially since 2010 when the road was redone, the traffic on BD Line um, and on the 19th side road have increased dramatically. So uh, this has been, um, since 2010, um, a repeated uh, number of calls to the OPP, to the township, to various people, um, never resolving the issue. Um, in fact, the 19th side road was posted for the longest time at both ends with no trucks. That sign was taken down by the township and I could never get an answer from the township about why that sign was taken down. And so now um, it is turned into the Freshco Express uh, Highway, uh, as many people are using it, um, including the trucks that deliver the goods, um, the groceries that we all eat uh, to that store. And so that traffic has led to some very close calls. And unfortunately for my neighbors this summer, um, their pet, their cat, was killed in front of their house by a driver. Fortunately, it wasn't their child. Um, but we, the, the traffic is exceeding the capability of BD Line, of Side Road 19. I can only speak anecdotally to the few times that I bike and cycle on Side Road um, 18. But I can tell you even Side Road 15 has turned into an express route. Um, and I know that because I was hit by a car while on my bicycle and that driver drove off and left me at the side of the road. And if it had not been for the cell phone in my pocket to be able to call 911, I am not sure that I would be here today. So the, the traffic that is already there is already exceeding the capabilities and the safety to add more units when you already have a huge subdivision going in is not prudent. So whether we're talking the development on the 18th side road and, and uh, BD line or on the 19th side road, traffic is a huge concern. Um, the other concern is that um, the facilities are not there to support this at this time. And so using just one example, um, there is no space in the schools uh, elementary schools um, for all the students that are moving into the area and yet you wish to add more units. Um, the ministry, although the Upper Grand District School Board has a parcel of land that they hope to be able to purchase at some point to develop an elementary school, uh, that has not been approved and this year due to COVID the ministry is not taking any applications. So it is many years down the road before there will be enough cap uh, capacity to house any incoming students. So I too, like Paul, uh, ask that we pause um, these developments, or if we are moving ahead with the developments, that we downsize them and they fit into what is existing there in the community, which is larger residential lots with single family home dwellings. 
thank you for this opportunity to delegate on the on the EV line project. Thanks very much Francis and I'll turn it over to our next delegation which is Mary Lloyd. Welcome Mary. Thank you Mayor Linton. I have a couple of questions and part of it is to do with the types of homes that will be built. Are these specifically both in the semi-detached and single-family two-story or are they bungalow style? That often is designates what types of residents will be having in that area. Could I have that clarified please? Certainly. Hi Mary. The semis semi-detached will be two-story. The single-family will be up to the prospective purchaser. We do expect some bungalows. There's some demand certainly in the senior market for that but there will be a mixture I expect at the end of the day of single and two-story. Thank you. My other question is with regards to the when it was explained about the common elements driveways into the new proposed apartment slash condominium were listed. Does that mean that that building in the next phase is planned to be a condominium structure? Yeah that's a separate phase as you noted but yes it will be registered as a condominium but we will retain it as a rental apartment building in its entirety but it will be registered as a condominium. Okay thank you very much. I would just like to note that in Centre Wellington right now we have a very strong crisis about housing values and availabilities for properties to be purchased that are in a little bit more of a moderate price range. I'm glad to see that there's the addition of some two stories available in this because two-story semi-detached homes often allows an opportunity for a family because there's a higher number of bedrooms generally in two-story. What I am concerned is in this area we've seen such a quick development and so many houses going in. We have residents in these areas that are still using private wells and septic to handle their effluents. When we start including higher and higher densities in here we start running the risk of having difficulties with those private wells and septics causing a resident's problem. The number of vehicles have changed certainly with the development of the hospital and ambulance traffic as well as the Fresh Co and people wanting to use it as a way to leave this community or come home. I know that wildlife is being displaced with all of these things that are going on in this area but I also recognize that being noted as a area in which to grow we are going to suffer with many of these issues. I do echo the comments made by Paul and with Francis regarding the concerns over traffic and the density. However, this plan has been on the books for a very long time and it looks to me as being quite thoughtful in adding semi-detached which at this time could often be seen as a little more of an economical purchase for some of our families in this community. I'm pleased to hear that the registered condo of the large building is hopefully going to stay as apartment buildings as that is a strong desire for residents in this area. So I want to go on record as representing those who have called me with those issues. Thank you very much. Thank you Mary. Our last delegation here is Carolyn and Sean Dunsmore. We're not sharing video here. I hope you can hear me okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, Sean. Our intent on participating in this was more as a resident on the Keating subdivision there. We're a row of about 13 or 14 bungalows in a row on Duncan Court that are going to back on to these detached homes that are in the back of us. And I guess our questions and our concerns are in relation to the plans for some kind of an easement or a buffer in between our property and these have to be 
honest, a little disappointed to hear that uh, uh, the, the plan is for potentially two stories uh, to be in behind us and looking into our backyards. Um, but uh, can we get some clarification, I guess, as to what's planned for the, uh, the buffer zone in between the two properties? I'm hearing mixed things in relation to fences and uh, an easement and a natural area and the path and these sort of things. Who would be the best one to answer that uh, inquiry? I'm happy to jump in again, um, unless it's Master sure. or Jeff wanted to speak. Um, yeah, at, at all the public meetings, and we held some privately just with the with the, the neighbors along Duncan Court, uh, the Laura Mill, going back a year or so ago, where we discussed this in detail. So, um, what what has been agreed upon was um, a privacy fence, of course, and then a landscape buffer as well. Um, so, all of those details are in the site plan agreement that we're currently working on. Um, and we could also, um, you know, if, if you're interested in more like exact details of plantings and whatnot, Sean, I can certainly uh, share the landscape plan with you um, that'll show some of those details. Okay, definitely appreciate that and I'd, I'd be interested in that. I guess uh, the question that comes to mind is uh, directly behind our property line are some, uh, some really nice mature evergreens that uh, would potentially provide some privacy from uh, properties, uh, especially two stories directly in behind us and uh, if they fall within that uh, plan for the easement uh, is there potential for leaving these mature evergreens or are they, they uh, sort of all due to come down? Yes I mean our preference is to retain every tree that we can especially the mature ones um, so the the tree the approved tree plan is on the county website um, I noticed our, our tree consultant James is also on the call here too um, and we, we could we could send you some details on which, uh, if any, and I'd have to go back and check, will be retained. Um, but of course, it'll depend on, on their location and, and then the recommendation of our consultant as to their health. If, you know, if we're doing work within their drip line, um, you know, wh whether it, it's expected, it'll affect their long-term health. So, uh, I, but I can certainly share that with you as long as, as, as well as the buffer um, and tree, or sorry, the fence that I uh, discussed earlier. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Sean. Um, that's uh, it for our delegations that we had. I just wanted to ask if there's anybody else on on this in this meeting that wants to speak to this application. Okay, I just had to go through both of my screens here. I don't see anybody raise their hand. So at this point, I will um, ask if there's any. A response or any discussion from the applicant based on what they heard from the delegations. This is Jeff Biesman, uh, uh, and uh, Taylor can comment that as well. Um, just to reiterate that the, the housing could be built today with the approvals that are in place, while well, the site plan has to be approved yet, but the, uh, the housing could happen today. Uh, um, and so I'm going to say I don't think it's appropriate for a pause on this development. Um, I can res I do respect the needs for the traffic uh, concerns at Side Road 19 and Highway 6, but really it's a, uh, I believe, a township and MTO matter to, to deal with. And maybe um, Scott can comment further on on the uh, on that, on this, and the relevancy of that intersection to the our subject area. Is, is there anything you want to add to, to that? Um, sure. Yeah. So um, we haven't been involved in the study of this intersection at Highway Six and, and um, Side Road Nineteen. It's my understanding the county has retained an engineer uh, to examine that intersection, and they are working on addressing the issues at that intersection. Okay, thank you. Um, any, any, anybody who hasn't spoken yet? Um, the delegation, I'm not asking the delegations right now. Anybody else who hasn't spoken to this? Okay, uh, at this point I will uh, turn it over to questions from council. And we'll just, uh, again, council's not making a decision. I just want to remind everybody, council's not making a decision. This is a public input session. Um, but I wanted to give uh, councillors the opportunity to speak to this. So we'll go around the the, the uh, virtual council uh, chamber here uh, and start with Councillor Foster. 
Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor. My question would be for Brett Salmon. Uh, Brett, uh, significant and legitimate concerns have been raised here about traffic, uh, traffic issues, probably 6 and 19. Um, were those adequately considered during the uh, site plan process and the zoning process? Uh, maybe you can comment on that, please. Well, I think I think what we're hearing today, and I'm hearing more or less for the first time in the, in the detail that Mr. Crabb has presented, the concerns in particular at the intersection of uh, where the Freshco is. And my understanding from talking to infrastructure staff is that um, I think uh, Scott referred to the county engineering looking at it, but it's in fact the township uh, are looking at that intersection. Um, as far as the traffic studies go, I think what I would need to um, to engage with Triton, they're the ones that peer review all of our uh, traffic studies that get done, and they would, they've done that on, on the study for this PD line and Farley uh, proposal. And uh, to put the question that uh, Mr. Crabb asked specifically about how was, how was side road 19 treated in these studies uh, and get a summary from Triton as to sort of what exactly those studies mean and how much traffic was envisioned uh, being on uh, side door 19. And of course, you know, we have the traffic study for this development was done in 2018. The Fresco wasn't open, the lights weren't up. So we've got a, a new situation with that store being open and the intersection being open. So I'd like to be able to engage with Triton to get their thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. A supplementary question, Brad. Uh, um, yeah, you're quite correct. The new, some new developments of the plaza now, but uh, nevertheless, Brad, you know, legitimate and serious concerns about traffic safety have been raised here. And the proposal we have here is basically, well, the two proposals rather, is uh, the net effect is to add about 100 or more homes onto the existing traffic ways which are we all know those of us who live in furthest know we have congestion along that corridor so I guess the bottom line Brad is what what can be done to address those uh, concerns they're legitimate and they're serious and they're relevant what can we do to address them yeah, um, add to that, Brad? well I, I think uh, the other thing to point out is uh, there's a whole there's a series of traffic studies done that have recommendations attached. And as development proceeds in uh, Storybrook subdivision, for instance, there's improvements that were carried out in association with, uh, with phase one at Millage Lane and some widening and turn lanes and lights. Um, and there are future improvements that uh, infrastructure and Triton have worked on that are going to work their way, their way into our uh, capital program in the coming years. And I think the county is working on the uh, issue that was raised with respect to the intersection of uh, St. Andrew and the uh, traffic signals there are in the county's capital plan as well. Um, but I think what we need to do to augment that is, again, go back to Triton and have their comment on the traffic studies that were done and specifically, what about side road 19? Because the focus of all the studies and the improvements that have been identified so far all relate to intersections along BD line. And there's nothing recommended at BD line and side road 19. So I'd like to hear from Triton on what, what that study said, what does it mean, and does the opening of the fresh coal make a difference? Uh, that, that was supported by its own traffic study, uh, that it led to the recommendation to have lights at Norton. And so, and we have to work with MTO uh, along that stretch as well. Even though it's inside the connecting link, MTO still approves all the, anything that happens in the, in the right of way, so. Thanks, Brett. Uh, Councillor McAway? Um, I, 
guess uh, Brett's comments are really answer my question as well. It's uh, I will certainly agree that turning left onto side road 19 from 6 north um, can be dangerous at times because uh, it is a very, very short uh, sharing lane there. And uh, I've been stuck there a few times myself turning left and, and with cars backing up before or behind me. So I know that it's there and it's, and it's going to create more problems with more traffic. Um, but I think Brett's uh, response as far as getting Triton to do the, to respond to the traffic study is uh, the only question or the only answer at this point. Thanks, Councilor McQuaid. Councilor Kipris? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the citizens for uh, making their presentations, um, especially uh, Mr. Paul Crabb. There's some uh, very uh, interesting uh, information that he has um, given for this uh, meeting. Um, I travel uh, this route uh, to go to work uh, regularly and I can verify that it is getting more and more congested, um, especially with the Freshco uh, starting up, but also there is a new dealership um, that hasn't even uh, opened up. So I would consider that that would be uh, uh, adding to that traffic situation. Um, I'm encouraged by um, Brett Salmon, the, the uh, planner, to uh, investigate that intersection. But right now, I'm sort of wondering about the BD Line um, intersection um, for uh, BD Line in Farley. Um, as that builds out uh, on the next phase, um, I'm wondering what traffic controls are on uh, for pedestrians, bicycle cars, and large trucks at that intersection. So perhaps, I don't know who's going to answer that, but somebody can. Perhaps Scott could answer that one. Either that or, um, Brett, are you aware of what we have planned for BD Line? Uh, no, I'm not. Be honest um, I don't recall that any of the reports that we've seen so far uh, recommended any changes that's something again off well we can make it part of Triton's commentary I do know in the long term that side road 18 is uh, identified as a collector road and it's in our um, it's in our long-term uh, capital plan for side road 18 to be upgraded and you know monitoring the traffic and traffic counts and whether there's warrants for any kind of signals is something that's an ongoing uh, process. Great. Uh, yeah, following Councilor Kippers. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I just, I just would like to know whether there's just going to be just a stop sign or traffic lights or other measures. So that's just really what I so what you're saying uh, with Trident, I wouldn't like them to discuss that area too. Thanks. Councillor Dunkler. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. I I've got some real concerns about BD Line because I get phone calls daily about the speed and the traffic and everything that's going down BD Line and this development is gonna add to it. So I echo uh, Councillor Kittress's concerns that we get uh, information on a light or something. I'd like to see if there's anything else we can do along BD line, uh, traffic calming measures that we can slow traffic down there. Um, I am concerned as the residents are about the traffic going 18 and 19. And, and, you know, again, here we are pushed by the province for growth. And we've, we come into an area where we're in joint jurisdiction between us and the County on, on uh, the roads that inter intersect 19 and, and the, St. Andrew Street being county, and, and the studies have got to be done so we can get the information to the residents. So I want to make sure there's a way for the residents that spoke today to get that information when those traffic studies are completed or any further knowledge we get. So is there a way that we can 
where are we going to post that and, and how are they going to have access to it? Well, I mean, I think I can answer that. Um, if there's information that comes out, you know, if we ask Triton to do some additional work going, uh, validating uh, the traffic studies, whatever comes out that's public information, uh, we'll share that to, um, to the community, and especially the residents in the area. Staff have anything to add to that comment? No? That's, that's doable, right? Um, Council McCray. Thank you, Mayor Minton. Uh, I have three questions. First one is, is it possible to, to actually resolve the traffic concerns that have been raised by residents regarding the intersection at 19 and Highway 6? That's my first question. I'm not sure how, um, is it possible? Um, well, I guess what I'm asking is ultimately we will be able to fix the problem. Who wants to take that one? I mean, there's things that we'll be doing. Um, there is going to be growth across Center Wellington. There will be more traffic. Um, things will get slower. Um, but I think what we've heard from our managing director of planning is that we want to make sure that our, our uh, that Triton can look at this, make sure that we do whatever we can to address as many of these concerns as possible. Um, and hopefully that goes a long way into um, solving some of these issues. But, um, you know, we, we're, again, as all councillors know, we, we've been tasked to make sure that we provide um, different types of uh, housing mix across Centre Wellington and that requires some intensification in order for people to afford to live here. Along with that comes additional traffic on the road. So um, some of that is inevitable, but I think uh, what we hear from our staff is a commitment to do whatever we can to um, address as many of these concerns as possible. Fred, do you want to add anything to that? Just to say, I, I, again, I know uh, infrastructure is uh, looking at this issue and they've indicated that they've engaged with Triton and I think there's some ideas of things that can be done. It all, it's got to, we've got to work with MTO as well. Okay, you have a follow-up? Yeah, I'm, I'm recognizing that with growth, you're going to get increased traffic. For me, it was more the, the safety concerns about how to make that intersection safer. So it sounds like we will be able to resolve it. My second question, um, and this is to uh, Taylor McDaniel, is what is the projected construction start and completion dates for this phase of the project? Um, we hope to be servicing uh, yet this winter um, uh, with the hope to start construction uh, first thing in the spring on the homes. Um, so of course that depends on, on the, the approvals and the site plan uh, being ironed out, but we're getting close on that. So. Uh, with any luck, uh, maybe even in December, uh, we could be breaking ground there on the servicing. So in terms of servicing, so when would this um, phase actually be full in terms of all the houses built? Two years uh, out? Two years um, out? I, yeah, yeah, I would say 18 months would be, would be reasonable. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So my third question is, is it conceivable that changes to side road 19 and highway 6 intersection could be done before the, for this particular phase of construction is completed? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's, that, that's a really good question, um, except I don't know how staff are going to answer that without understanding what Triton comes back with. So depending on what um, our engineer require, uh, suggests what needs to be done, um, which um, we, I'm not really sure how you can put a time frame to that, but uh, Brett or Andy, if you have any additional additional information on that, feel free, Andy. Yeah, through you, Mayor Linton. Uh, yeah, we'd have to see what uh, Triton's remarks are and what their recommendations are and looking at the costing and uh, allocation of costing from taxation, development charges, and uh, the local developer. Um, so we would have to look at all those issues and solutions and see if possible from a financial situation to rectify the um, intersection. And um, also, uh, 
MTO uh, will be a big part of that. And as councillors are already aware, uh, other intersection improvements with MTO uh, take a substantial amount of time to get approvals. Great, thanks so much um, for everybody for being part of this process. Um, uh, there again, no decisions are being made. Um, and uh, I would now like to thank everybody for attending and say that this meeting is now adjourned. And we'll go on to our next public meeting. Thank you very much. Mayor Lynch, if you could just give me a few minutes to bring in the people that have been waiting. Everybody's joined that wishes to join. Okay, thanks, Carrie. Um, so now I will call this uh, public meeting to order. It is three o'clock on Wednesday, November the twenty-fifth, and ask members of council if there's any declarations of pecuniary interest under municipal conflict of interest law. Okay, seeing none, the purpose of this meeting is to present and receive public input regarding a proposed draft plan of condominium on subject lands known as uh, 112 Side Road 19 in Fergus. The proposed draft plan of condominium consists of 16 single detached residential lots with a common road access. The County of Wellington file number for this application is 23CD-2023. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meter, meeting or make written submissions to the Corporation of the County of Wellington in respect of the proposed plan of condominium before the approval authority gives or refuses to give approval to the draft plan of condominium, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Corporation of the County of Wellington to the local planning appeal tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submission at the public meeting or make written submissions to the Corporation of the County of Wellington in respect of the proposed plan of condominium before the approval authority gives or refuses to give approval to the draft plan of condominium, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of the appeal before the local planning appe appeal tribunal unless in the opinion of the tribunal there are reasonable grounds to do so. Additional information regarding the proposed draft plan of vacant land condominium is available by calling 519-837-2600 extension 2171 to obtain the information electronically or by mail due to the closure of the county office at this time. If you wish to be notified of the decision of the Corporation of the County of Wellington regarding this application for plan of condominium, you must make a written request to the planning and Planning and Development, Corporation of the County of Wellington, 74 Woolwich Street, Guelph, Ontario, N1H3T9. Ask right now if clerk has the notice was given. Uh, through you, Mayor Linton, notice was mailed to prescribed persons, agencies, and public bodies on November the 5th, 2020. A copy was also published in the Wellington Advertiser on the same date, November the 5th. I can therefore confirm that the requirement for giving notice was completed on November the 5th, 2020. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, now at this time, I'd like to introduce our Wellington County Planning staff, uh, Curtis Marshall, to introduce this application. Welcome, Curtis. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mary Linton, members of council and the public. Uh, today's public meeting is being held for the proposed Great Haven draft plan of vacant land condominium. Uh, this meeting is required by the Planning Act and provides an opportunity for the public to provide input. The County of Wellington is the approval authority or condominium applications, and no decision is being made on the application today. County staff are here to listen to the applicant's presentation and to the public input. Thank you. Thanks, Curtis. I will now call on the applicant, uh, Astrid Close, the planning consultant, to introduce this application. Welcome, Astrid. Thank you, uh, Mayor Linton. Good afternoon. 
My name is Astrid Claus. I am a planning consultant appearing on behalf of Brighthaven Homes Limited, the owner of the property at 112 Side Road 19 in Fergus, subject to this vacant land draft plan and condominium application. I'm just going to run through the PowerPoint presentation that was included in the council agenda as well. The surrounding land uses, so here you can see the subject property is outlined in, in the red solid line and it has frontage on side road 19, BD line and Burnett Court. And the subject property is surrounded by single detached residential homes and environmental protection lands. This is an excerpt from Schedule A1, Wellington County Official Plan. Again, the property is shown in, outlined in red. The County Official Plan implements the Provincial Growth Plan. The, the Provincial Place to Grow 2019 plan states that emphasis is on optimizing the use of existing urban land supply and represents an intensification first approach to development and city building one which focuses on making better use of our existing infrastructure and public service facilities and less on continuously expanding the urban area. The proposed single detached dwellings are permitted within the urban center designation and that's what's shown in yellow on this plan. The subject property is located within the built boundary of the Fergus Urban Center. This application will assist the township in meeting the residential intensification target you can also see that there are core green lands and green land system designations identified on the subject property. The natural heritage features will be protected from development and a buffer provided. An environmental impact study has been prepared by Abood and Associates that examines the surrounding natural heritage features and existing trees and provides a recommended buffer and tree retention to mitigate any potential negative impacts from the proposed development. And the, the county official plan also does state that Wellington will encourage the development of vacant or underutilized properties for residential uses, which are compatible with surrounding uses in terms of dwelling type, building form, site coverage, and setbacks. And for this property, the dwelling type, building form, site coverage, and setbacks have already been established by the existing zoning and will be respected by this proposal. So slide four, this is an excerpt from the Township of Central Wellington Municipal Plan. Um, again, the proposed development implements the existing residential designation in the Central Wellington Municipal Plan. The single family dwellings are permitted within this designation. They're compatible with the surrounding land uses. Full municipal services are available for the proposed housing. The subject property is located within the built boundary within the urban, Fergus center, urban center of Fergus. So just to be clear, there's no county or official or township official plan amendment required for this proposal. The development implements the current designations and policies. This is from the township's zoning map. The current zoning of the subject property is a specialized R1A72 which permits the proposed development. So no zone change is required. All of the proposed, in this case, they're, they're units, they look like lots, but because it's a vacant land condominium, they're units, meet the minimum 18 meters of lot frontage required by the current zoning on the property. And all of the proposed units meet the minimum of 560 square meter lot area required by the zoning. And the zoning also permits these lots to have frontage on a private condominium road um, so no zone change application is required for this proposal. The development implements the current zoning that exists. So this is uh, the vacant land draft plan of condominium. This is the subject of the public meeting today. And again, you can see side road 19, there's Burnett Court and the proposed site. The wetland is shown in a darker green tone and the wetland limit has been identified in the field by a boot and associates and confirmed by the GRCA. And also from that wetland, a buffer has been provided as recommended in that EIS and that 
developer is respected in the development proposal. You can also see the common element road that all these units would be tied to. And the brown building envelopes are estimates of where the future homes would be located. The slides 7 and 8 are essentially examples of the homes at Wright Haven Homes, a well-known and respected local builder is proposing to build on these units. The majority of the homes will be bungalows. However, there will be some two-story homes also included. The council will note, and there's been a discussion already about information provided by Mr. Crabb, a resident with respect to the existing turning movements on Highway 6. This is important information, obviously, for the township and the county to be hearing at this public meeting and the applicant. I would, I agree that having Triton and MTO and the township look at this issue and work to resolve this issue, because it is a current issue based on the traffic movements that are existing, and so that is something that council can decide how it will be rectified. But I would note that there's no real need, if you will, to suggest a pause, given that there's, as has been stated, there's no decision being made at this meeting. We are, in fact, here to hear this type of information at this time and then determine how it should be addressed. So this is good information for everyone to be receiving today. There have also been letters from residents with respect to a request for a fence to be provided on the property line to deter trespassing. The owner is willing to have included as a condition of the draft plan of condominium approval that a fence be provided to the satisfaction of the township, so I think that's something that can readily be provided. Sometimes we do find that there are existing trees along a property boundary that we need to make sure are being retained, and so the fence and the tree retention will be balanced, and that's why it's to the satisfaction of the township to provide some flexibility in how that condition would be addressed. Just one other, there was a question from one of the councillors, and I'm not a traffic engineer, so I'll begin by saying that, but I did have a little bit of correspondence back and forth with Colin Baker, and he's not suggesting what the solution would be, but some of the items that were discussed were the potential for a raised median, rumble strips, more line painting on Highway 6, but of course that would all be subject to Triton's review, MTO's review, and there may also be a possibility of how the timing of the signals and the advanced left turn, so I think there's probably a solution here. It's just determining with the right folks what that should be. In summary, this vacant land condominium implements the current provincial, county, and township planning policies. The proposal also implements the current zoning on the property, and I am available to answer any questions that council may have. Thank you. Thanks, Astrid. I have a few other people here. I have Steve Conway, Shannon Davis, James Dennis. Any one of you want to speak to this application? Okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't, you weren't, your tile wasn't up yet, so yeah, do you want to speak to this, Steve? Go ahead, Steve. Sorry, all these different formats have different ways to unmute, so good afternoon, Mayor and Councillors and members of the public. My name is Steve Conway with GM Blue Plan Engineering. We're the civil engineers on the project, and just wanted to share with everybody a few points regarding servicing. So the intent would be that the development would be serviced with municipal services, that being 
sanitary sewer and water. Uh, those connections would, would come from side road 19. Uh, the storm sewer, uh, the site would also have storm sewers, which would outlet to the nickel drain number four, so essentially the large culvert that goes under side road 19. Um, as uh, the previous uh, presentations and discussions, uh, there's a lot of talk around the traffic and the intersection of side road 19 and highway six. Uh, so we did have an opportunity uh, to review a traffic study that was completed in 2017 uh, for the Fresh Co Plaza. <coughs> and that study um, did look at background traffic at that intersection of side road 19 and highway six out to 2030 and provided uh, some results as to the level of service uh, that would be expected in uh, 20 in 10 years, I guess, uh, with and without the um, the plaza development, and with the plaza development, uh, the level of service and what's called the volume to capacity numbers only changed a small amount. <coughs> so uh, the plaza itself generates hundreds and hundreds of trips during what's called peak hours, and uh, as you can imagine, uh, this development of uh, which essentially would be 15 additional residences. Um, would only generate probably in the neighborhood of five to six cars an hour during the peak hour versus the um, maybe a hundred that come out of fresh comb. So just trying to put that in perspective. That's all that I have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, any Anyone else for the applicant want to speak right now? Yeah, go ahead, James. Um, thank you for having me. I'm just going to speak quickly about the trees um, uh, on the site and uh, specifically about the preservation efforts that we've taken. Um, uh, Astrid highlighted the, the kind of environmental green spaces that are surrounding this spot and um, we have uh, done an inventory of the property and we, we inventoried 116 trees on the, on the property. And with the constraints of the green spaces, we've had to obviously had to remove some trees, but the preservation priorities um, with this development have been, um, you know, we've tried to preserve as much as we can, um, prioritizing trees in the buffer and trees along the property line. And I think we've done a pretty good job uh, by to balance the, the needs of, of the development, but, but also the, the needs of the of the neighboring trees, and that in, that includes incorporating some uh, design changes with the uh, with the engineer, um, specifically with the proposed uh, infiltration trench, and that saved a few trees along the property line, and and especially um, mitigated a lot of damage. So ultimately, we will have to remove some trees. But um, our compensation plan that's conceptual at this point will provide 26 caliper trees as replacement, 19 whips, um, which are conservation grade to be in the buffer, and then another 300 total shrubs to um, fill in the spaces where trees are just not appropriate. So there's a significant amount of replanting going on as well to compensate for the, the loss of vegetation. So um, just trying to be proactive in terms of addressing any comments or any concerns that um, the township or any residents may have about tree preservation. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I wanted to discuss and present. And if anybody has questions about trees, I'm, I'm here to answer those as well. Thanks, James. Anyone else from the applicant side? Shannon? Uh, yes, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Shannon Davison, and I'm also with the Boone Associates as an ecologist. Um, I was involved in the completion of the environmental impact study uh, in support of the proposed development. Um, the environmental impact study was completed to examine the existing conditions on the nearby natural features and recommend mitigation measures uh, based on the draft plan of condominium provided by um, Astrid Close. Um, the condominium plan has implemented the recommended buffer 
and the mitigation measures stated in the environmental impact study. Um, so I would just like to say that I'm available to any answer any questions um, that council or residents may have in regards to the environmental impact study. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, we have a number of delegations uh, scheduled for right now. So uh, again, I want to remind the delegates to um, stick to the 10 minute time cap and or less. You don't have to take the full 10 minutes if you don't want to, but uh, stick to the 10 uh, minute cap. Um, before that, I see that uh, Steve Wright had his hand up. Steve, you want to add to the discussion? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I, I just wanted to follow up with uh, our um, our, del our consultants' um, words, and I was happy that you had the opportunity to hear from them. And um, and I just wanted to express that um, we are moving forward with a 16 thing single family home subdivision uh, with is in the freehold vacant land condominium. And of course, we heard Jeff Usman describe what the vacant land condominium represents, um, but the freehold aspect is means that you own your own property and of course um, you share common element areas and some of these common air element areas that i'm proposing in this site is of course the street the street lights infrastructure within the street any common elements such as mailbox park benches or pathways or fencing or other physical structures created within the lands of the condominium and i'm not sure if we can share um, Astrid, I, I know you have some pictures that I would like to give a representation of the type of subdivision or uh, vacant land condominium that we've done in the past. So I'm not sure if um, uh, Carrie is okay. Sorry? Does somebody have the document that Steve's referring to, either Astrid or Carrie? It's showing up on my screen. Oh, am I not? Okay, sorry. Yeah, um, is it? Is everyone else seeing it? No, we're seeing your uh, Zoom meeting. Oh, well, that's. Not yeah, just toggle over. There you go. Yeah, and if we could just slide down to the screenshot that we have of um, our Highland Ridge site that we did, uh, just right adjacent to the Shoppers Drug Mart in Fergus, it was one of the first vacant land condominiums that was done within uh, within Center Wellington, and it was very successful. And I know it was used as a template for other vacant land condominiums. But uh, what I wanted to stress is to show some of the infrastructure or the, or the shared common element areas that I think are features and allows a developer to do some what is what I consider to be picturesque streetscaping. And you can take a look at the uh, upgraded light standards. The street has the rolled curb. Um, we have fencing, uh, may not be the type of fencing that we would propose in this uh, to subdivision because I think I would be leaning more towards a vegetative fencing, but we can discuss and, and work with the municipality on, on those factors. But you can see that it's, it, it allows and affords an opportunity for a developer to, to create some unique areas and some nice spaces for people to enjoy, and especially on this site. Um, I wanted to stress too as well, Your Worship, that this is a low density proposal uh, never once did I consider, or despite what pl provincial planning legislation would allow or suggest a higher density uh, as a good land use for application. Uh, and the reason why I didn't ever consider that is because I'm really being sensitive and respectful to the existing housing and neighbors on side road 19. Um, I, I've come forward with a relatively simple plan and, and it's a private street created with a cul-de-sac, which is consistent with um, Burnett Court, which is another cul-de-sac just up the street from where our proposal is. Um, it's in keeping, and of course Astrid had mentioned it earlier, that it's in keeping with the existing zoning and meeting all the frontage requirements and the lot size minimums. Uh, and my purpose and intention in creating the development was to create homes that people desire. Our housing style has always appealed to a move up buyer, a move down, empty nester, family serving family members. Most of the homes will be bungalows and, uh, and on a quiet cul-de-sac cul street backing mostly onto green space. And, and it's a potential for um, like treed rear lot lines. And by permitting um, just 16 single family homes on large infill property with such as this, I'm essentially serving this market segment of housing affordably. Um, some of the advantages of our site, and Steve mentioned it earlier, but we have municipal infrastructure right in front, the sanitary sewer, water, sewer, gas, hydro, utilities, no municipal burden or extra infrastructure costs are required to service the site. 
which I know is a primary goal of our smart growth initiative locally here. Um, the private streets with lots backing onto green lands is nothing short of what I sense as a quintessential desired streetscape. Um, the houses that we're proposing will have wide expansive lots which allows for frontages with porch designs and recessed garages, which I know is a big concern in, in land use and, and design architectural planning. Being that the development is private, I'm also um, able to propose what I consider to be leading edge technology initiatives, such as our rainwater leader collection system for watering lawns and of course flushing the toilets. I'm hoping to be expanding our net zero home projects, which incorporates solar and renewable energy benefits to the homeowners. Uh, which will help and offset utility costs for, for making the home actually more affordable for, for purchase and operation of the home. And, and I also may have the opportunity to explore community district energy, and I've worked with uh, Centre Wellington Hydro locally. This is an Hydro One site, so I'll be working with, with them, and hopefully they'll be taking in the same enthusiasm towards our net metering program that Centre Wellington Hydro has endeavoured with me on. And, and, and I can assess that by, this, by doing this, these sorts of things, this project would be considered on a national level of interest. So I think that's really important. So I'm hoping, as Astrid suggested, that this pro proposal does not get delayed. I, I'm very excited about bringing forward a really nice site and um, I think with some unique and creative opportunities. So thank you. Thanks very much, Steve. Um, at this point, I'll turn it over to the delegations that we have. And um, again, I just uh, remind uh, folks that it's a 10 minute uh, limit on this. Um, first uh, delegation that we have is Francis. Welcome again, Francis. Good afternoon, and, th and thank you for the opportunity to delegate. Um, I'm not able to share my uh, screen because I am at, at work. Uh, so am I able to ask Astrid to uh, put up her uh, display because I do have some comments and questions directly related to what she just displayed. So uh, I see Astrid has started. So if we could go to the picture with all the yellow and green. So right, it was right at the start. Okay, so the parcel land that uh, we're talking about being developed today, um, most of it is in yellow. You'll notice that there's uh, green, which is green lands. Um, so those trees that are shown in the light green, they'll all be gone uh, when this development is completed. I am looking at the tree preservation plan, um, and if Astrid, you go to the next slide that shows where homes uh, marked 8 and 9 are, please. So if you look on here, there's lots of green lands. That's all going to be gone. So 8 and 9, uh, those are forested areas. That will all be gone. And I do want to be clear to Council um, and to everybody um, that I am the landowner um, not shown in this drawing. So I am not the residential uh, landowner that you see on the right hand side. I am the residential owner not shown um, along that long property. Um, so I am directly to the west of this. So I am on just over two acres. And so um, my property extends to the very back of this proposed development. So I am looking at eight homes that will back onto my property when I stand in my kitchen and look out the window, I will be looking into the back end of homes one and two. Um, so I do have the, a couple of questions. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about preserving green space. There's also was a comment about a fence. So uh, no one has ever approached me about a fence or preserving the green line. And when I look at the Abood and Associate Tree Preservation Plan that I was provided with, which is dated in July. Uh, there's a very large number of trees being removed and a large number of trees are being removed along that red dotted line that is the dividing line between my property um, and this proposed development. And um, those trees are that natural fence line and Astrid, if you would go back to some of those images that you showed that are artist conceptions of what the homes look like. 
please. So I also have the, you know, the planning report and urban design. So those homes, all these artists' conceptions show all these big forested trees existing. Those trees are either my trees or they are trees that are slated for removal. So I find these images being presented to be somewhat misleading. And so that, you know, that is a concern. I am just going to touch on, we've already covered the traffic study, but I just, for the record, I have in front of me a large number of documents for when the road was reconstructed in 2010. Because residents on the road in 2010, when the road was being redone by the county, raised serious concerns with Triton Engineering and with Ken Elder, the Director of Public Works. And we got nowhere. We were told there will be traffic studies. We'll resolve these issues. And that has not happened. We asked for rumble strips. We asked for stop signs. We asked for speed bumps. Nothing that we asked for was delivered on, and the traffic has just gotten worse and worse. So this is not a new issue on Side Road 19. It is an issue that was raised in public meetings, in writing, with Triton Engineering. It's been brought up multiple times in the past and has not been addressed. So I am somewhat concerned that we are having these same conversations 10 years later. So I would just like to reference the planning report and urban design brief. So in, which I'm hoping members of council and the mayor have. So it's, this report talks about the fact that what exists currently are large lot residential homes, and that what is being proposed is in keeping with it. And I've heard the reference several times to Burnett Court. And the only problem there is when I look at Burnett Court and the size of the homes and the size of those lots and the intense forestification, that is not representative of what is going to happen here on this property. So I have concerns that that is not an accurate representation, that what is being built here is an identical copy to what is already existing in Burnett Court. So for the members who do have it, the only picture that appears of my property is on page five. I'm figure seven, the abutting dwelling. My dwelling is small and typical of what is on the street, which is a 1,200 to 1,400, 1,500 square foot home, single story. There is an existing two story, the original limestone farmhouse that will, their driveway will directly face the proposed common element road. So these homes that are being proposed, they don't match the existing community. So when I look at page eight, which talks about the specialized residential R1A 7-2 zoning. So the properties are meeting all of the minimums. So that's great that it meets all the minimums and there are no bylaws or zoning laws required. But to shoehorn in 16 homes and eight of them are their backyards, the back end of their homes are immediately adjacent to my house and my property. And no one else's because on the other side, you have a buffer for the GRCA because it is a protected area. You know, hitting all the minimums, yes, that allows you to meet the letter of the law. It's not in keeping with the development. To be clear here, this is not a disrespect for Wright Haven Homes. They build good product. It is a concern about the number that are being put in that we are putting in so many that all we can do is reach all the minimums instead of looking for something that is more typical of what is on Burnett Court. There's also many mentions in this report about why people have moved to Fergus, the charm of the area. And I will absolutely agree to that. I moved here in 2005. I specifically found this property 
before it went on the market and bought it the day it was being listed. It was never, the sign never went up. It was never listed because of the size of the land and the fact that it was forested. There was conservation protection areas. So putting in 16 homes is not in keeping with the neighborhood or what I was ever expecting to be developed. I heard Stephen mention about putting in all the lighting. While that may sound great to the 16 homes that are there, currently my area, when you step into the back, which is a mostly forested area, is completely dark. And we understand that for animals and birds, that is really important. Also, for those of us who are amateur astrologists and want to go out and look at stars, look at the moon, flooding it with artificial light destroys that. Light pollution is an issue. So is noise pollution from having all of these homes. And, you know, what happens there impacts the property beside it. I am also concerned about my well. I am a little concerned that a number of years ago, 2013, when there was the Beattie Hollow development that is up at the church and the corner, even for that development to move forward, I was approached and my well was monitored to see if development that far away had any impact on my well. And yet we're going to do a very large development right beside me, and there's been no mention of my shallow point well. And as the township is well aware from the road rebuild in 2010, there are water issues on the road. And I am very concerned that this has an impact on my well and my septic. When I look at the report, it does highlight about promoting densities for new housing, but it also talks about promoting the use of active transport and transit. Well, that's not possible on this road. It talks about minimizing the cost of housing. This project, while very nice, is not in any way minimizing the cost of housing. I do know that there was an environmental impact study prepared, and I would question when it was done, what was surveyed. I know on my property that there's all kinds of salamanders. There are reptiles. There are all kinds of larger animals. And I worry about the impact, especially in the back far corner, that a lot of that is going to spill onto my property. I will lose the turkey flock that lives on my property. I will lose a lot of what I and my surrounding neighbors, some who were not able to delegate today because of the time, what we value in our land. So I understand the need to fill in underutilized land. I would ask that council go back and look at accepting a revised proposal from Wright Haven that moves homes away from my property line, that reduces the number of properties. So it will still be a condominium development, perhaps a mix of less expensive housing is a possibility, but something that minimizes the impact on the area and is more in keeping with all of the existing homes that are there. Thanks, Francis. That's just over 10 minutes, okay? Yeah. Thank you very much. Moving on to Paul. I'm here. Are we online? Yes, we are. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'll dispense with the slideshow. And I did, as I said, pre-issue a deck related to this proposal. I'll just jump to, you know, the issue there is the corner, and there's been a fair bit of discussion, and it looks like I'm not alone, and my wife is not alone, that that corner at Side Road 19 and Highway 6 is a little bit hairy. What the relevance to this proposal is, there's 16 homes. I think I heard 15, but 16 homes being proposed here. 
And uh, this is a 20% increase in the residences on the side road 19 and the side streets. And I just counted all the houses uh, on uh, side road 19 between Highway 6 and uh, BD Line. So we can expect a 20% increase in the resulting traffic and demand because the other traffic reports have said all the development west of uh, BD Line will never impact uh, side road 19. So, uh, and the traffic studies seem to say, well, it's going to be a 1% a year or something. We're going to have a massive impact of uh, traffic increase with this one proposal if the other studies hold true and the other developments will not impact side road 19. I don't think that'll happen. I think the other studies will impact side road 19 as well. And that, are, are, am I still online? I'm seeing Francis there on screen. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. Um, so then I, I'll just jump to sort of the, uh, the, the last and then we'll be done in, in a matter of minutes again. I do believe it's paused and, and I do believe that this should be paused until you fix the safety issues. I, I spent my life in industry and you know, if somebody got injured or if there was a close call or if there was a risk, you know, you stomp, you stomp the plant, you stomp the, the process and you fix it. And in this case, I, I'm hearing enough. It's not just myself, it's not just my wife, it's not a friend coming to visit. Uh, there's enough to say there's a problem there. The, uh, Mr. Wright has also said that the, all the infrastructure is there. And he's right, water, hydro, uh, sewage, it's all there but not the roadway. And roadway is infrastructure and it must be provided by the, uh, the township. The infrastructure at Highway 6 and, uh, and uh, Side Road 19 uh, is not there and not suitable at this time. And thus it needs to be uh, addressed and fixed and not a stopgap with rumble strips and that. The issue is lack of storage. Uh, and uh, you can't have vehicles stopped or halfway in uh, a left-hand turn lane and uh, then have uh, uh, vehicles heading north bearing down on them that could bump into them, push them into oncoming traffic. Uh, we don't want that. Um, so my strongest recommendation is, uh, uh, you know, once we solve the problem at Side Road 19 and Highway 6, then a traffic study be done. Make sure that the traffic study takes into account traffic patterns from the developments that are just coming online west of BD Line, uh, the new proposal up uh, that we just uh, talked about at 2 p.m. As well, the traffic study, their models need to take into account the surges and predicted surges, not speak to averages. And somebody on the call on, on the, uh, the last meeting also said, well, there's just an average of so many an hour and it, it doesn't matter. Or it, well, he didn't say that. He just said it's an effect of an average of an hour. Traffic doesn't move in averages. It moves in clumps and uh, it starts, it stops and goes. There's a series of traffic lights and uh, left-hand turns to businesses along that route that's going to create that clumping. Um, so those end my comments, and I cede back to you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Paul. Um, turning it over to our next delegation, Mary Lloyd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak on this matter before you today. Um, to reiterate the concerns that have come forward from the neighbors, um, the effects on the wells that are still in existence on side road 19 by neighbors that chose to not join into the municipal services and the effects on the septic systems that are included in this area are, are of some concern because they are already seeing difficulties with what has been going on to um, the, the street already. I also recognize that historically many of these lots were established as wet veterans parcels and they're somewhat larger than what we would see in a normal, or normal urban area. But as we have grown as a community and we are now seeing both side road 19 and side road 18 becoming what's seen as urban streets, we do have a number of concerns with people who feel that their lifestyle, which they chose to live on a quieter uh, area, 
is, is in being infringed upon. The light pollution and the concerns around wildlife are very real and have much merit in what they're experiencing. And I can understand when a resident is faced with eight uh, backyard neighbors, um, they're somewhat concerned that there could be issues that arise from that. I am pleased though that there was a discussion around a privacy landscaping and uh, issues to preserve trees that are being studied very, very extensively because this property is a significant area of environmental protection. Thank you very much for all the consideration of having your time this afternoon and I appreciate uh, speaking to you on this matter. Thanks Mary. Um, next on the agenda is Octavia and Urania. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so to introduce uh, my wife and I, uh, we moved into Side Road 19 about five years ago. Um, I think we have a, a pretty important voice in the matter because we actually built our own house. We were the uh, contractors uh, ourselves. Um, we're on 142 Side Road 19, so just a few houses to the west of this proposed uh, building. And we dealt with the process that uh, comes from building your house. Um, it was not an easy one. Uh, there were a lot of restrictions and a lot of challenges that I didn't, and I don't understand how this project is moving forward with. Um, one, one clear one that stood out is uh, our home had to be at most 50 meters or so, I believe, from the side of the road, and this was for servicing. So uh, the proposed plan is much more than that. And to be fair, um, this was an understandable um, measure because when we were building the house and servicing it, the water level in the area is extremely high. We actually had to commission um, a company that does, um, they, they pump the water out of the ground to temporarily lower it so we could even get the servicing done because it's, it's impossible to just use an excavator to get the servicing done here. It's actually a pretty challenging area to build and service one house, let alone 16. Uh, the reason we moved in the area was a pretty simple one. It's a very quiet area, and it really appealed to us that we could be part of nature and kind of coexist in it. And we built our house very similarly to how all the others were built in the area. Now, um, the uh, previous owner of the property that we purchased to build, he tried to separate it in multiple parts, and he was actually denied by the city. Um, they, they tried to get, I think, houses in the property that we ended up building and that was denied. So it, it was denied that he could build two houses. It is a 1.7 acre property. It's about one third of the size of the proposed uh, building that I believe is happening. Um, so we feel a lot of the restrictions that apply to most people um, don't seem to uh, apply or they're really on the edge in this situation. And um, to be fair, uh, I I agree with the denial. I, I'm, I'm very happy that there were not two houses ended up being here. The fact that the community opposed um, houses built, you know, this tightly together is honestly part of the reason why we moved here to begin with, right? So it's, it's part of an understanding that people have on why they want to live in this community. It would certainly um, break the, uh, as, as it was mentioned, it would certainly break the spirit of, of the law to have 16 houses built in such a small area. And I was, as the PowerPoint presentation was happening, uh, just through the slides themselves, I saw, I believe, on, on page five of the developer PowerPoint presentation, the actual allowed building space is about two to three times uh, more of a normal lot, not 16, right? This is, there's a large discrepancy. It's pretty obvious that the idea is to get as many houses crammed into this space as legally possible but there's not one property on the street that follows this spirit, okay? Every single property on the street is, is, you know, living kind of in harmony with the surroundings. Um, there's a few other things here. Uh, in terms of trees and wildlife, 
It was talked that there are over 100 trees on the property, and, you know, many of those are going to go away. A hundred is not a lot. Like, our property is a third of the developed area. Like, since we've come here, we've planted, like, 150 trees. It's not as many trees as it sounds. It sounds like 100 trees is a large number. It's not a large number. I don't really understand that. I do have a feeling like it would not look like the other lots in terms of the trees. And in terms of the wildlife, so our property, part of it was restricted by the GRCA, different parts of it. The one that's proposed for building has significantly more areas that are, you know, supposed to be preserved, supposed to be green land, all the rest. The truth is that, yeah, the rabbits, the turkeys, the deer, these are not regulatory borders for them, okay? These trees, these deer come up to our house. You know, these bunnies, we see them going around, like, right beside our garage and stuff like that. So even though, yeah, the letter of the law has these boundaries and, you know, they abide by them, sure, but the wildlife living in the area certainly uses all of this space to exist and wander about and live their lives and all that. So to say that there wouldn't be any impact at all is not really going to be the case at all from someone who's lived here so much. In terms of the traffic, there's been a lot of voice about the traffic on Side Road 19, and I don't feel I have too much more to add to that, except for the fact that in their cul-de-sac there might be quite a lot of traffic because it didn't look, again, it's very tightly spaced together. The road that leads to the cul-de-sac is going to probably have quite a bit of traffic, probably a lot of noise from that. My main concern is actually BD Line. So BD Line is seeing its own set of large development over there, and as someone who goes down that road every day, I would say that road is already inadequate for the people that live here right now, let alone the massive development that's happening over there, let alone for the soon-to-be 16 homes that will also probably use that road as well. So there are, I think, a lot of challenges there that have not been really discussed or addressed. All in all, yeah, we moved here because of the quiet side. People are here for that reason, and the way that this project is moving forward, they even compared it to, you know, look how good of a job that was done in downtown Fergus. Yeah, totally, but this isn't downtown Fergus. There's a very stark difference between the people and the houses that are in downtown Fergus than there are here, and perhaps it is something that needs to be made a decision on. I don't think it's fair to have all these country homes and country lots and relaxed living with wildlife in the back of Fergus here and then put, like, downtown Fergus 16 homes on one lot. If the idea of the city is to put that level of density of houses in this area, then honestly, like, honestly, just make the regulation easy and have everyone do that, and we'll find somewhere else to live. But the people that live here right now don't want that. There's a reason they live here and not in downtown Fergus, and I feel that's not really being respected. Our ask to council is that, sure, there's underutilized land. People want to use it. People want to live there. That's fine. It just doesn't seem that 16 is quite the right number in this case. As I mentioned, even from their own diagrams, it looked like the livable space was about two to three times bigger than an average lot. So 16 times seems like a bit too much. Thank you. Thank you, Octavian. The last delegation that we have registered is Maria Toth. Welcome, Maria. Is there a Maria here? Mayor, Maria is here. I'm not sure she's hearing you. I see her in the screen. Yeah, so do I. Maria, can you hear me? Never mind. Maria, can you hear me? 
everybody else hear me? <laughs> Good. Maria, can you hear me here? You're still on mute, so... Okay, well, um, I'll go on to see if there's any responses from applicants. If Maria comes on, um, just alert me, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm still watching her, but um, ask if there's any responses from the applicant based on anything that they've heard uh, so far today. and I understand and appreciate and respect a lot of what was said today and um, and and I too have shared those same sentiments and I understand that you believe that it to be uh, a, a more dense uh, subdivision proposal or intensification more beyond than what you would think for a single family home that you have enjoyed building but the property does warrant it and we can fit it within the zoning requirements that are consistent with the neighborhood. And our reference to Burnett Court wasn't so much about the, the housing or the style of housing, but that they, it is consistent with the street fabric. So at some point in time in the history of, of development on this side road 19, somebody saw it as good intentions to create on a parcel similar to ours, a cul-de-sac. And this is what I've decided to do. And I believe that the number of units that we're proposing for the site are really respectful and sensitive to the area and the neighborhood. And I appreciate all the concerns that Francis had brought forward with regards to the tree and, and the lighting. And, and I respect that. And what this vacant land condominium allows me to do is to propose or put in infrastructure or lighting that could be sensitive to night light and astrology and the birds and the and the um, and, and any of the wildlife that you're referring to and similarly to your backyards that enjoy the deer coming in a lot of these homes will not change that direction as miss uh, octavia had mentioned that there's no boundaries for wildlife well you know that's that's all part of it and this is the opportunity for other people to enjoy that too as well so um and, and Mr. Crabb brought up lots of good questions and points with regards to the traffic and as everybody does. But this project with 16 units is relatively minor in consideration to what we could have put on this subdivision in consistent, being consistent with provincial policy. And this site is certainly not the catalyst for any further works or requirements on, on uh, Highway 6. It does appear, and it is obvious, that I'm a community member too, and I drive that route, and my office is up in that north end, but there's been a lot of limitations just recently of this in this past summer. Uh, uh, that being, of course, the bridge was out in Alora, so I found myself going on side road 19 more frequently. Beatty Line had been closed for the better part of two months with while they were doing reconstructive work, which would have forced a lot of traffic out onto um, the balance of side road 19 and that intersection. There is obviously, and, I, and I'll attest to this because I've experienced it myself, is a shortcoming of driving skills that is, that is seeing, seeing people cut into that center median area for the turn signals. And I agree, but I think there are solutions that can be made. And there's certainly traffic consultants and engineers that can offer that sort of service to the municipality. And of course, the engineering um, company that works on behalf of the municipality. I, there's some smart minds there and they can figure it out and there is opportunity to do that. So um, those are just some can, uh, points that I thought I would get at least the opportunity to speak to uh, on it. Now, as, a, as part of affordability and, and people talking about affordable homes, this is not the opportunity. This property is not the opportunity to be creating homes, affordable homes. What I've done by providing 16 single family homes on this property it has made these properties, these homes on these homes, more affordable to purchase. Because if I was to break it up into one or two, as being suggested, the value of those homes aren't as affordable when I can provide 16 on it. And the sizing of the houses that I'm proposing 
are consistent with what Francis had mentioned, um, you know, 1,300 to 1,400 square foot homes. A lot of those plans that you did see are 14, 15, 1,600 square foot bungalows. And, um, and I think those are for certainly respectful of the consistency of the housing in that, in that neighborhood. So I hope that sheds a little bit of light in my direction. And, um, and we did spend a lot of time and effort as part of a consulting team to figure out what was the best proposal to bring forward with this site. And I thought I was being very sensitive and respectful to, to the neighborhood. So thanks very much. And I appreciate everybody's comments. They're well-founded and we certainly are as a team prepared to take them into consideration. So thank you. Thanks, Steve. I'm gonna open it up for um, members of council right now. Um, and again, remind members of council, these are for questions. Um, again, we have no decisions to make today. So this is for questions that you have of these applications. So let's go around the room. Uh, Councillor McCray. Thank you, Mayor Linton. Um, through you uh, to Stephen Wright. Um, first of all, I appreciate the fact that you're proposing to provide mostly bungalows because we definitely have a shortage in our community for bungalows. I hear from a lot of seniors who want to downsize that we don't have enough bungalows, so that may actually reduce prices for bungalows. My question is, listening to the residents' concerns about trying to save existing trees, I'm looking at an aerial photo of the site and I see sort of a line of existing evergreens along the west side of the property. Is there any chance of preserving most of that by maybe possibly shifting your whole street location and housing slightly more to the east to allow more of those trees along the west side to be saved? Is that possible? Councillor McCray, I appreciate the uh the question, it's a, it's a really good one. There are quite a few limitations that will, uh, that will prevent us from moving the street to the east. Um, there are consideration for buffers to, to what is considered conservation lands or the green space that we're all referring to. And the location of the street was well thought out in the sense of how we could um, essentially bisect the area that was developable while preserving and keeping all the balance of the property uh, consistent with its natural elements. The fencing that we're talking about or the fence row on the, pri on the, the west side of the property abutting Francis's property, we have been truly respectful or at least I am trying and I think my uh, consultants will attest to this. I am Despite the fact that my, my job and my business is about developing land, I am very much a tree uh, and bird enthusiast, and we do try to prevent the cutting down of trees unnecessarily. Unfortunately, there is some infrastructure works or grading works that will have to go on adjacent to your property, Francis, that will prevent us from keeping some of those trees. Now, if there's an opportunity to work with you on it, as we've talked in the past, I am very, very much respectful of that private line uh, of your boundary and of those trees. And it was very, very specific to us that I mentioned to my consultants that we keep any and all trees that are on your property, of course, and anything that is shared the property line. I said it's, it's most important that those trees are preserved. So I hope you can respect our sensitivity to your property and boundary line. When I said about fencing, my choice for types of fencing along this property boundary would be some sort of vegetative fencing. So not, not a board on board fence because we do not want to go into these sensitive land areas the way we would have to do in order to build a board on board fence, the way you saw it in my proposal in, in um, uh, uh, Highland Ridge, which is not quite downtown Octavia, but it's, it is by the shoppers drug mart. What I would propose that the fencing along there would be some sort of vegetative fencing. And we're gonna to have to make that fencing consistent all the way along the property boundaries to prevent any intrusions onto the sensitive areas. And I think Mrs. Toth was going to talk to that effect about fencing at the rear of lots eight and nine because she's an abutting landowner. I don't think putting in a board and board fence or any type of fencing like that 
would be consistent with the nature and that and native ground. So that's why I'm proposing some sort of vegetative fencing. And I know we can do that because I have a consultant who is very sensitive to those aspects as well with the hiring of a boot and associate. So I, I will take their professional lead on any of that. Um, did I answer your question? Like right now we're at the questions from council. So I want to make sure that we're getting uh, councillor questions answered at this point. Did that answer your question, Councillor McCray? Uh, yes, it did. Thank you. Okay. Uh, councillor um, Dunsmore. Yeah, I was going to ask about trees too. I figured Ian would ask about water. But uh, I guess maybe, James, you should answer this question. You said there was 116 trees on that lot, and uh, how many have to come down? You're replanting 26. So what's, what's the net difference on that? Okay, so we have uh, recommended that of the 116 trees we inventoried, let's see, we will be uh, removing due to the development 55. Um, there are also some trees that are in poor condition or dead, and also some that are actually 21. So there are four that are removed due to condition and 21 that are dead or in poor condition that are also in conflict with the development. So that, the, the quick math there for, to help you out is uh, 25 trees would, that we inventoried would be preserved. That doesn't include trees that are in the, like past the wetland boundary. Um, we knew we couldn't get in there, so um, we didn't inventory those. So that kind of northeast corner, we don't, we didn't quantify what was there. Um, and it's not going to be touched. So there's still a lot of green space on the property that will remain intact and within the buffer um, for the wetland. There's no, it's a no-touch buffer. So uh, we 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 can we don't have to worry about. Um, well, I mean, trees in there will not be removed. We can we may have to do some grading within a certain distance of the trees. Uh, um, but we can we can certainly mitigate those those impacts pretty easily. So, yeah. So yeah. I mean, in total, um, we're keeping 25, which means uh, a total removal of uh, what's that? 80, 89. Okay. And and I was glad to hear Stephen say that, he, that fencing. He would look at vegetated fencing, and maybe we get some trees back in there and some. Uh, edges back in there. My last question, Your, your Worship, if I may, um, the, the concern about the wells, I always have concern about wells and water, so is somebody monitoring these wells? Whose responsibility is it? I can speak to that uh, question. Um, there has been a geotechnical study done on the property, and uh, there's three monitoring wells on site right now. We've been monitoring water levels for a year and a half. So we are aware of the elevation of the water. Uh, moving forward, uh, prior to construction, we would uh, have to do some additional studies to discuss uh, dewatering during construction, uh, but that would be short-term dewatering. And as part of that, uh, we would be reaching out to any uh, wells within a potential impact zone uh, to monitor them during the dewatering. But that would be short, uh, short-term dewatering uh, construction. Councilor Kittress? Thank you, Mayor. I have uh, a few questions. Um, I'd like to thank all the uh, residents for speaking, first of all. I know it takes a lot of time and effort to come forward for a meeting like this. Um, the question that I have, I think, I'm not sure whether it's for uh, Stephen Wright will be able to answer it or one of his consultants, but um, there was a lot of uh, talk about affordability and it seems kind of relative. So I'd actually like to know, what is the affordability as in price of these condominiums that are being proposed? What is the range of that? The second question is, was there a traffic study done for the cul-de-sac road going into uh, side road 19? Um, uh, I know a previous project couple years ago with Jenner Homes, they only had about eight 
homes going in on Garifraxa, but they had a traffic study done going into Garifraxa. This one has 16, so I'm just wondering, since this area, there's such a, it's increasing in traffic, like, significantly. And I know that that road was closed for Vidi, but that road will actually be more busy from Vidi Line because people didn't go that way. They went south instead of going up when that traffic was stopped on Vidi Line. And the third one is, this one's really for, I guess it's for Brett. And there's been, again, a concern about safety and road safety. And I'm wondering, is safety and the requirement for safety on that intersection of 19 and 6, is that sufficient to have an effect on the considerations of growth? There's some residents here that have wanted to pause just to resolve this. And then one of the councillors, I think Councillor McRae, that asked whether it would be resolved before the other project would be finished. And I'm wondering about this issue of safety. If you do piecemeal, continuously more and more developments, there's a tipping point where it becomes too much. So I'm just wondering, like, how does that, how do you figure that out for growth? That's for Brett. That's it. Thanks, Councillor Kittress. So, Steve, I'll turn it over to you for the affordability question and the traffic study question. Thanks, Your Worship. So, Councillor Kittress, thanks for the question. It's a good one. Right now, the pricing of the homes that we would be gearing towards would be anywhere between $700,000 and $900,000 for those size of homes and on that size of lot. And then as far as the traffic study, there has not been a traffic study done associated with this development. And, Brett, is there any comments that you have on the road safety question that Councillor Kittress had? Well, just to say that, you know, things like the transportation master plan that we've done are looking at traffic sort of globally. But, yeah, when these issues come up that are site-specific where you've had reported to infrastructure, there's a problem. Well, there's a problem with, you know, that situation already. It's not necessarily the growth. But the reason why we have development charges is to collect money when development occurs to pay for these growth-related infrastructure improvements. So that's what we do. Again, this specific traffic problem at that intersection is going to have to get looked at separately from, you know, look at collectively how these different developments cumulatively might impact that intersection. And that's what we'll ask Triton for advice on. Councillor McElwain? Thank you. A couple of questions. Steve Conway kind of touched on the question I had about the water level in that area. And I know that we've run into problems in the past with work alongside Road 19 when the infrastructure work was being done, impacting people's wells because it's a very high water level in that area. And so I understand that there's going to have to be some dewatering for short term. But how, I mean, is it a, when you say short term, is it until the 13 or 16 homes are all finished being built? Or exactly how long, how short a term are we talking about there? I don't know, Steve, you're probably the answer. You have to answer that question. Sorry, I had trouble getting the mute button again. Yeah, so any dewatering, the water levels that we've seen over the last year and a half are low enough that they don't impact house construction or anything like that. It would mainly be the deeper infrastructure like the sanitary sewer. So that's the level that we're talking about. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks to both counsel for your arguments. The case just argued is submitted.
So that would be for the duration of the installation of the sanitary sewer. And, of course, we would have to do a more or a stronger hydro-G study to determine the distance that might be impacted by dewatering and which wells would fall within that zone of influence. As for the, I guess, the timing for the impacts, this area is sand. So essentially when the dewatering is turned off, so when the sewers are installed, the water level would return back to normal fairly quickly, most likely measured in a matter of days. But there would be no long-term impact to any of the wells or septic systems. Thanks. Do you have a follow-on, Councillor McElwain? The Councillor's on mute. Councillor McElwain, you're on mute. I guess somebody else did that to me. Yeah, I just, the water would return within a few days because it's sand, as you said, but the actual work being done, are we talking like a couple of months of dewatering? And what kind of impact can the well owners expect during that period? What would be the backup plan while they are impacted? Let's see. Probably the sanitary sewer would be installed by a contractor in a matter of, I would say, four weeks. Of course, we haven't done the finalized plans yet, but my gut feel would be maybe four to six weeks. Depending on the depths of the well, if they were impacted, then the owner would be responsible for providing water to the residents, and that could be done with a couple of different ways, providing a temporary water service from the existing municipal supply or providing water tanks. Because this area's got a water main on the street, I would anticipate it would be a temporary water supply. So it would be no different than you may see infrastructure works happening around Fergus or other municipalities where you would see a water main running along the surface of the ground with hoses going to each house. It would be something like that. In fact, my house in Guelph, they were working on the water main last summer, and we were on a garden hose for two months with no real impact to our water supply during that time. Thank you. Another follow-up? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor McQuaid. Thank you. This one, I guess, is for Stephen Wright. What is the total acreage of this property, and how much of – there's only about two-thirds of it, but it looks like things that is where you're building, the rest of it is green space. So how much property is the actual building area? Good question, Councillor McQuaid. I might defer this to Astrid or Steve because I don't have the plan right in front of me, so I wouldn't be able to definitively give you an idea of what that is. So I'm going to say three acres, but I'll maybe defer to my consultants on that. Thank you. I can answer that question. So the entire area of the property is 2.176 hectares, or 5.37 acres, but the portion that is going to be within the single detached is 1.218 hectares, and then the common element road is 0.958 hectares. And the rest of that would be the protected area, the natural heritage area. Thank you. Councillor Van Looy? Thanks, through you, Mayor. There's not a lot of extra questions to be asked here, but I would encourage the residents to continue to work with Mr. Wright and his team on this. This really is the point of a public meeting to bring 
bring the, the developer and the neighborhood together and to listen to concerns. And uh, I know that Wright Haven has always been there to, uh, to also listen and to develop appropriately. So um, I thank you for allowing us a question, but I think the other councillors have really gotten uh, into the depth of all the details so far. So thanks. Councillor Foster. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, first of all, Mayor, I'd like to uh, just acknowledge uh, Octavian and also uh, Francis and Paul for their interest and for speaking to us today. Um, I see a common theme there. Um, all three of them, and I think as well Maria, Maria Toth and her husband Gaber, um, I, I, I had a number of long talks with Gaber before he died. And he talked to me about moving to this area probably 25 years ago, and he, and he did that as the other citizens uh, uh, did as well. Uh, people are attracted and more attracted to this area because uh, you got two and three and four and five acre lots. In this case, this, this, house, this uh, lot has uh, five acres. You've had only one house on a five acre lot. Francis's uh, lot, I believe, is two acres or thereabouts. Uh, Gaber's is, uh, and Maria's is also two to three acres. So I think I think what I'm hearing here, and I and I understand this implicitly, is um, we're talking about the peaceful enjoyment of property as the area was laid out initially. And um, I think, Mayor, my question really is for. Uh, uh, Stephen Wright and also for Astrid. Um, Astrid spoke about compatibility and uh, you know Francis spoke about eight, eight, eight homes backing onto her home. Um, I'd like to talk about compatibility here uh, your worship and, and so I guess my question is how can we how can we possibly consider to, on an entire streetscape of two to five acre lots how can we how can we suggest that 16 homes on one lot is compatible with the existing streetscape? Uh, Astrid, can you can you help me understand that, or Stephen? I think I heard them respond to this already, but I'll, I'll give them the opportunity. Steve or Astrid, who wants to speak to this? Oh, well, I can I can jump in. It's Astrid. Okay, Astrid. I'm on. Um, compatibility has a very specific definition in planning. Um, and w it doesn't mean exactly the same as. What it means is they can coexist har harmoniously. So, and that is, um, you know, we have single detached homes proposed next to single detached homes. We're gonna work hard to preserve trees and have buffers and uh, landscape fence, et cetera, and meet all the zoning requirements for setbacks. Um, the uh, the owner is not applied to change the zoning here. This is the zoning that is in effect on the land when he purchased it. So, um, and some of the other references and the lot sizes may impact, relate back to prior to services being extended to this area. And so that's why there may have been additional restrictions as far as setbacks and, and lot area, minimum lot area requirements. Um, the services are here now, and I think that we will see that uh, intensification, and hopefully it'll be sensitive intensification such as this uh, being proposed. But we will continue to, to work through these issues that we've heard today and, and with staff. So, thank you. Thanks, Astrid. Uh, follow on, uh, Councillor Foster. Uh, thank you, Mayor. My second question, I think, is to... Oh, can you hear me okay? There we go. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor. My second question would be to uh, Brett Salmon. Um, Brett, we've heard from Octavian how a previous owner attempt to subdivide his two-acre lot into two lots, and uh, that was denied. Now, here we are with a proposal to, to divide one lot into basically 16 lots, um, I can't help but see a little bit of, um, I, I guess I've got to use the word hypocrisy in terms of uh, the, what was done then and what was said then and, and what is uh, uh, being permitted or proposed now. 
can you help me understand, Brad? How, how could we turn down a proposal to divide a two-acre lot into in two lots and now uh, and turn that down, and yet here we are considering uh, a proposal to divide one lot into 16, and, and we're considering that? Well, I, uh, I don't recall the spe specific example that he's talking about. Uh, frankly, I don't recall any applications that were denied, um, but there may have been. Um, again, the township wouldn't have denied it because the county is the approval of the lot of perception. Um, but I do know, just thinking back, that uh, on some of the severances, this, happen this lot happens to have a lot more frontage than is typical on the street. Um, and in the past, there have been concerns raised with severances um, that are of, uh, with the number of driveways, if they were just doing the straight severance, and the uh, proximity of driveways to each other, and the safety of backing in and out on Side Road 19 um, because of a number of lots that had direct access. So the difference, obviously, with this proposal is they're proposing to build a road to get access, um, which is, which makes it different than a typical site. If this if this development was done this way, you know we would see the frontage divided up into into a bunch of lots, and we'd have a, a bunch of individual driveways. So um, that's why this would is different than a set. Thanks, Brett. Uh, thanks very much, Council. Again, the purpose of today's session was to get input from uh, residents, um, and I know it's easy to get uh, into some significant discussions here, but really was to hear uh, from residents today. Again, no decision is made as a result of today. So I really thank uh, the delegations from coming. I know it's uh, hard to do this in the middle of the day, and appreciate you taking the time to uh, delegate to us today and tell us your your thoughts on on this proposed um, uh, proposed application. So. Um, with that, I will adjourn this meeting and thank everyone for attending. Have a good rest of the day.